Greetings everyone. With the onset of winter, I really wanted to get the generator connection to the house fixed properly. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So the current setup for the generator on this house has this SO cord coming out and it has a 20 amp receptacle or not a receptacle, but a plug on the end of the cord that you can plug into the generator and it comes up and it goes to the breaker right here for the generator well that isn't really to code because there's no way to isolate the generator breaker from the main breaker so the project at hand is to first of all get the breaker set up in this spot where the water heater currently is and there's an interlock device that goes right here that will not allow you to turn the generator breaker on without turning off the main power and the reason you want that main power off when the generator is going is if uh, the power is out from the utility and that main breaker is on and you're feeding the power from the generator, you're actually feeding power back into the grid and the utility workers could get um, hurt. So uh, the goal is to get the breaker up there with the interlock and I purchased a generator uh, connection box that's gonna mount right here. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing, let's get this uh, old generator hookup out of the way. Let's see, where's that ground? It's all the way up here. So the plan is, I've got, um, this is called an LR, uh, an LB looks just like this and it comes in the top and goes out the back. An LR comes in the top and goes out the right side and an LL comes out the top and goes to the left. So if you're ever trying to figure out which one you need, you can, um, if you just look at, you know, if you're thinking about it, looking at the face, LR. It'll kick out to the right, LR, or excuse me, LL, kick out to the left, and LB will go to the back. Just an easy way to remember that. So the plan is to mount the, the LR here. I'm going to put a little bit of three-quarter conduit. And I've got this uh, generator connection box that I'm going to mount on the wall over here.
So I have a three quarter inch chase nipple that will go through the bottom of the panel box and thread into the LR. All right, there we go. Now let's get the generator connection box connected. So I got the cover disconnected from the box. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to knock out uh, the three quarter inch round knockout on this side of the box since I'm coming out of the the LR and I'm going to go into the box over here like this with the uh, conduit. There's the half inch. Let's see if we can get a hold of the three quarter inch here. Heavier screwdriver. There we go. It's out. All right, so let's figure out the height to the center of uh, the LR outlet. So I can set the box in the center of the knockout at the same height. So I'm just going to go off the bottom of the siding. And it's uh, 21 and 3 quarters up. So I'm going to come over here and mark 21 and 3 quarters is right there. So I'm going to want to have my box probably right there. Make me all actually move it a little closer. It all depends if I can make this offset that close. So uh, let me go get um, a small length of three quarter EMT and a couple connectors and uh, we'll see what we can do. So let's see what the offset is gonna be now. So the LR is two and a half inches out from the center and the knockout on the box is going to be one and a quarter to the center. So I need an inch and a half offset. And online you can find a calculator that will tell you how much, uh, how many degrees to pitch the pipe and then extend out so much more and then pitch it back the other way to get your inch and a half offset or whatever the offset you might need. Um, I have never been able to really figure that out. So I'm just going to do the trial and method error. I'm just going to uh, just bend the, the conduit up just a little bit this way and move up and then I'll bend it back down the other way. And what I'll do is I'll, you know, I'll just keep tweaking that just a little bit until I get the inch and a half 
or excuse me, inch and a quarter. All right. And now I need to bring it back. So we will grab it on the other spot, on the opposite side of the bend. All right, I got the uh, water uh, tight EMT connectors. Um, the, the ones that can be out in the weather now will have the blue on the nut. Um, they're pretty close to the same as the regular ones, but for some reason they must have, uh, must have a better seal on the inside or something that makes these uh, weather tight, the blue ones. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that in the LR. And tighten it up here a little bit. All right, well, it has a rubber seal also, I forgot to mention. So, all right, that's in. Now that'll give me kind of an idea if I put another connector in the box, how far it needs to go. And I don't know where I set the other connector. So let me find that. All right, I got the other connector. Let's put it on the box. And we'll see what uh, kind of distance we need from of the uh, EMT conduit. That's going to be too close. So I'm thinking I will set it over here. I can, if I cut my offset eight inches total, looks like it'll be good. All right, I got to cut. I'm going to ream the ends here. And what that does is it takes that little lip off of here. So if any reason there's a vibration or whatnot, it's not gonna cut that wire. It's nice and smooth on the inside. All right, that feels good. Let's get this mounted up now. Got the offset in the box. Tighten it down a little bit. And we'll put it in the LR. Ugh. And we'll put it in the LR. Come on. All right, I guess I'm gonna have to take it apart here. I see what happened. That yellow piece got jammed in there. Let me get that out of there. All right, we're back in business. I got the yellow thing out of there. So let's get this mounted up.
twist it on me here. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna get some screws in this so it doesn't move around on me so much. And then I'll snug the rest of it up, but. Oh, I'm glad I pushed that in. All right, now I'll get some screws in it. <laughs> I'll get it snugged up. All right, uh, I got some real short construction screws because not really sure what's behind that wall and I don't want anything penetrating in there real far. And of course, all my power tools are at the build site, so I'm gonna have to do it the old fashioned way. I'll speed it up so you don't have to uh, watch me screw all three of these in at regular speed. Okay, uh, I gotta leave the top just a little loose because this lid has to come over the back to make it uh, rainproof. So I can't snug it down too much right here at the top. All right, I got my wires. So let's work on getting those fed. So 30 amp service or 30 amp, uh, I guess, generator connection needs 10 gauge wire. So I got four feet, it's about a foot here and three feet at the most, going, or two feet going up at the most. So three feet, I ended up getting four just to have a little extra. Um, let's get the LB cover off and we'll start feeding the wire in. Correction. LR cover. And I think I'll put a little tape on the end to make it easier to feed. All right, there we go. There's that. Now we'll uh, work the wires up into the box. Good there. I'm gonna go ahead, I'll put the cover back on. I don't need to get back in there again.
All right, let me get all these end strips, uh, ends of the wire stripped, and I'll be back. So the electrical connector, uh, this one is the uh, the L14-30 type, so it's good for 125 or 250 volts, depending on how it's wired. And on the back, there is uh, an X and a Y connection. Those are going to be for the two hot leads, the red and the black. And then there's a W, and that's where the, the neutral will go. And then my green wire that I fished through will go to the box ground here and this green from the plug itself and the cover gets uh, attached to that same ground lug in the box. So let's do that. Okay, let's do the grounds now. There is the ground from the electrical box and I just need to open up this connector a little more okay I'll give you a close-up shot of this if you like There is the back of the generator connector plug. There's my grounds coming up. And now I just need to land uh, the wires once I get the box all closed back up. screw out of the, the box. There we go. There we go. Let's get the uh, wire stripped on the this end and landed. I'll come back once I get them all stripped. All right, I've got everything stripped. I'll go ahead and uh, land these and then I'll bring you in for a close up.
Okay, I'm running out of light, so I'll give you a quick view of this. And then hopefully I can get some light on and I'll show you the, how we're gonna put the interconnect in so you can't have the generator breaker and the main breaker on at the same time. So I went ahead and connected the neutral all the way up at the top as well as the ground. Uh, that way, you know, there's plenty in there. If I ever need to move things around or whatnot, I have plenty of wire from that circuit to, to, to play with. And then we've got the red and black landed above on the 30 amp breaker for the generator connection. So how this interlock works is, and I haven't got it mounted yet, but you can see that it's holding back the generator breaker from being able to turn on. And what you'd end up doing is turning the main breaker off and then this can slide up and now you can flip the generator breaker. So I'm gonna get the, uh, get this taken apart so I can um, line up the holes and mark them with an ink pen. And then I'll pull the panel off and uh, drill them out. So it is the next day and I had to stop what I was doing last night for two reasons. One reason was uh, it was getting dark. And the second reason, uh, I went to drill the holes for that generator interlock. And this is a prime example of why you should film everything when you are making videos. Um, I thought, okay, I'm not gonna bore you with drilling holes in this uh, cover plate for the electrical panel. Well, I used the drill bit that was supplied by the company that um, makes the interlocking device. And when I got it, it looked kind of funny to begin with. It was dirty, like maybe it had been used or something. And uh, I'm not sure what's going on with this drill bit, but it, it wasn't drilling very well. And so uh, I pushed harder on the drill, pushed harder down on the drill bit, and this is what happened. Look at that thing, it bent right over. I've never seen a drill bit do that. So I'm wondering, the interlocking device was made out of aluminum. So I'm wondering if this company is making these aluminum drill bits. And um, I probably should have bought the more expensive kit. I bought it on Amazon and most of the kits were probably uh, between 20 and $30 range. And this one just happened to be like 14 bucks or something like that. And so I'm like, wow, okay, I'll get this one. And uh, that's probably why uh, either they are putting in cheap uh, drill bits to make it look like the rest of the kits. Um, this kit happened to be fulfilled by Amazon, but <laughs> it was made by uh, what appears to be a company in China. And there were other kits that were made in America and uh, my advice to you, probably should get that kit in the future. So uh, I went down and bought another 316 drill bit, uh, a nice Irwin uh, drill bit, and we're gonna get that cover drilled now and uh, get that in generator interlock installed. So some of you might be wondering why I'm using this old corded drill. And that's because all of my battery drills are down at the house build site. And uh, I didn't want to run down there to get those uh, just for these three little holes that I have to drill. Um, but I can tell you, I've had this drill for over 30 years. Um, I bought it when I first got into the sheet metal business and it is still ticking. Um, it never needs recharging because it seems like even though the battery technology is getting bit, a little bit better and I've gone to uh, a better system, uh, you still run out and 
that's the one thing about a corded drill it just never runs out of power as long as you got a plug nearby so let's get this uh let's get these holes drilled now All right, let me get uh, a couple screwdrivers to tighten these up. All right, let's get this panel reinstalled. So there's the generator interlock set up, and as you can see, you can't turn on the breaker that feeds the uh, generator connection unless you flip the main breaker to the off position. Uh, I can't do that right now. Uh, Carrie's in the house working, so we need the power, but uh, there you go. The interlock kit also came with stickers on how to properly uh, do a startup with your generator. And it also gives a caution uh, label for stating there uh, where the location of the plug is for the portable generator. So uh, I just put at panel of the building because uh, we installed it right below the panel. And the last part of the equation for this project, I purchased this heavy duty 10 gauge extension cord with that same uh, L14 slash 30, I believe it's called, uh, socket. And so I can hook this up to my generator and string it out and so I can have my generator under a cover and it'll feed the power I need into the house. So when it comes time, I just have to push that in and it gives like a little, not even a quarter twist to lock in. And then of course the other side of the cord will plug into the generator. So uh, when you get ready to do this project, just make sure that the um, type of interconnect you use matches the amperage output of your generator and that your breaker that you set in the panel uh, matches as well. So uh, my generator puts out 30 amps and so I've got the 30 amp box, the 30 amp cord, and the 30 amp breaker. And lastly, uh, I sh should say that uh, all the circuits that I was working on were de-energized at the time. Uh, I suggest you turn off all the power whenever you are working on electricity. Uh, some locations may require you to uh, get an electrical permit for installing one of these uh, generator hookups. So check with your local building department 
to make sure uh, whether or not you need uh, a permit for this. I want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.